uh, a cool little thing that we can do with uh, particle effects. In this case, we're going to use N Dynamics. I'm going to use N Particles, which is going to introduce you to a couple of menus, and uh, and we're going to get started with a little explosion. I often get asked by students, uh, how can you make something explode quite quickly and easily? Um, so I'm going to focus on kind of some real basics. Uh, you can really dig down deep into this stuff and get a lot more uh, information from it. So. Um, yeah, you could do you can do loads with it, um, but I'm just gonna have a look at some of the basic um, visuals that you can do. So let's have a quick look. Uh, what I've got set up here is an animation that I did uh, on a previous tutorial about just shattering uh, a marble into four. There, um, you can see how that plays, uh, and I'm just gonna get this uh, to uh, add particles to the exploding marble okay um, and we're gonna use end particles to do that and uh, I'll show you the advantage of that so uh, very quickly the first thing I'm going to do is move it to the point at which I've got this shatter happening um, and I've got this ball which is going to start moving away uh, and I'm ready to start uh, uh, adding some end particles to that so I've selected the four pieces of the shards so there they are um, and I'm gonna go to end dynamics and inside end dynamics, I'm going to go to end particles. And inside there, I'm going to create end particles. Now you can see you can do end particle tool. You can create an emitter that will create an emitter at the center of your scene, um, which you can then position wherever you want to emit particles from, like smoke or uh, little bits of firework or you know really whatever you want. Um, and these little squares mean that there is a menu inside there, and you can play around with them. Um, and set up what you want. In this case, I want to go to emit from objects. Uh, in this case, I'm emitting it from shard one, two, three, and four. Um, so uh, we're going to go into the options there. Now, I've set up the rate uh, by default at 50. Um, I'm creating a new solver because there is no. Uh, this is the uh, end particle, the, the emitter of the. This is the name of the nucleus, if you like. Um, so it's going to be called Smash, um, and we're having an emitter type of Omni. There's lots of options under there, directional surface. You can play around with those and have some fun. Um, cycle emission. No, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. You can keep, you can play around with that if you want. Um, distance direction. Uh, so maximum distance. I'm just going to turn that down uh, a bit. See if we can reduce the distance there. The speed is on zero um, because I don't want these particles to fly away from the object. Uh, in this direction, I want them to stay where the object's just been. So I want to try and limit that. Um, this speed is random here, so I'm going to turn that down to zero as well. Um, but you can play around with the different effects if you want. Um, like I said, this is all changeable afterwards once you've created it. So I'm going to create that. Now the main problem I've got straight away is that these particles, I'm on frame 106 at the moment, these particles are going to start straight away um, because I'm not playing it through, it's not showing it properly. Um, and I don't want them to start straight away. So I need to go and find out where I can control that. And if I go into the channel box, this is be the normal place to look. Um, you can see here, if I scroll down, uh, you've got certain connections that have been made um, with the particles. And one of the connections here inside the end particle shape is that the start frame has already been connected but to something. And that start frame has been connected to the nucleus. So Smash 13 you can see here is attached to nucleus 1. And the nucleus holds certain values which will enable you to control um, multiple groups of uh, particles. So I could connect more particle emission. So if I had 13 of these balls, I could connect them all to Nucleus 1 and they'd all share these same properties. And that's the advantage of the Nucleus or the N in N particles. Um, so down here you can see we've got gravity switched on. That's fine. We can have gravity switched on. We could play around with wind and air density. You know, you can have loads of fun with this stuff uh, playing around with it. Um, using the ground plane means that um, it will bounce off an invisible ground plane that's here uh, rather than traveling through it. And you can position that frame as well. So if you wanted to have a ground layer that it bounced along or it stopped on or, or hovered over, you could do that. Um, there's loads of stuff down here. I'm not going to go into all the details. Uh, what I'm looking for is that in time attributes, I'm looking for that start frame. And when you come into this, it will be scrunched up and you will need to expand it. So I want that start frame to be um, about 110, I think is about when they, uh, when they come on. So and I'm just going to uh, leave that as it is 
so hopefully now the particles won't appear at all oh and then they start off at about frame 110 if I play that through there we go we've got those happening so immediately I'm going to do a quick render uh, very low quality you can see what this looks like okay now I'm going to leave that set up as it is and I'm going to start playing around with some other settings inside here um, so first of all I want to try and reduce some of these particles there's a few too many of them so uh, I'm going to go and click on end particle here and you can see that uh, these smashes there should be four of them one two three four they're the four different parts one, two, three, four, that I've got here. They're named 10, 11, 12, 13, because I've been playing around, um, and I could rename them if I wanted to. Um, so what I can do is just click on that, and um, this is the only thing I really need to change in here, is I can reduce that right the way down, so it's not not producing many particles at all. Uh, so each one is producing slightly different number of particles, make it seem a bit more realistic and fun. I'll just reduce those down. Um, you can see the nucleus there is listed once I've clicked particles these two things are connected here um, if you haven't got this panel up by the way if you haven't got the display up if you go to panels um, saved layouts and oops in saved layouts and inside there you go perspective outline and you'll get this same view up and that'll help you um, so as it goes through now hopefully we'll get less yep uh, so I've got a lot less now I can see my objects there as well so let's give that a little bit of a render so this is a nicer amount of particles let's play around with what those particles look like now so again select that and we've had a look at the nucleus we've had a look at what we can do in smash so the next one is end particle shape um, uh, there is another one over here which is the particle itself we'll look at that there's very little you need to do in there most of the time this is to do with limit information um, uh, advanced animation stuff and how it's displaying things whether you're using mental etc so um, the particle here the end particles uh, we've got loads of options in here we can play around with and you can quite literally go through this end particle shape and uh, have loads of fun just changing stuff and see what happens so first of all let's put that onto a constant range uh, lifespan of one um, in fact let's just make that a bit random one lifespan random let's just put that at 0.2 there um, see how that goes um, and we'll leave Let's see, I'll just put it on two. Um, the radius, I'm going to turn that up so they're quite big. Um, and then I'm going to have a look at this radius scale here. And if I click on this graph, I can add another point. So I can get it go from big to small or small to big, which is what I'm going to do this time. So you can see how that kind of falls off now from the uh, edge of the part, uh, objects there. So they get smaller as they as it travels away from it. In fact, it's as it gets old, so they get smaller as they get older. Um, and it's linear at the moment, let's just turn that to smooth. Lovely. So we'll see how that looks in a minute or two. Um, you could play around with collisions, you can keep playing around with dynamic properties, all sorts of things down here. You can change with dynamic weight, conserve drag. This will change how they fly in the air and uh, are affected, particularly if you've got other forces that you've selected. Uh, or you apply to the particle fields that have been generated so you can have some real fun with this remember that uh, fields are up here so you can apply that stuff if you've got the particle selected you can apply maybe a radial force to it or spin them around and stuff um, I won't do that right now but you have a play and enjoy doing this creatively so let's just move down I'm going to sc scrunch some of these up because uh, I don't need them so point field drop off we'll just leave that as it is um, and right the way down, the one that you're going to be really interested in to begin with is this shading uh, arrow, which when scrunched up is nice and small, but it's got loads of options underneath it. You can see that clouds are only rendered with Maya software, so if you're using this and you're using Mental Ray, you'll have to learn how to use layers, uh, render layers, to render out the software part and the uh, Mental Ray part at the same time. Um, and that will make things a bit easier for you um, but you've got loads of options in here um, sprites are really good fun uh, blobby surface is really cool um, but I'll just stick with cloud for now um, and, and let you guys explore this stuff uh, so let's have a look inside here uh, opacity I don't want that to be one I want that to be lower than one so I never want it to be an absolutely solid um, looking uh, color there um, extend that out a little bit so I can see that a little bit clearer sorry about that um, so in the opacity here I'm going to do the same thing I did before I'm going to click on that graph and I'm going to get it to fade out 
over time and again I'll put that on smooth so as it goes into time as time get, goes on as, as it gets older that the the, um, uh, the particles will start to fade away um, let's have a look at that at the moment see what that looks like just so you get a rough idea so you can see them as they get older they're fading out the ball of uh, energy is here and then fading out and moving away from the objects quite nicely. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit uh, too small but I'm going to leave it as it is at the moment. Now the colour, obviously you guys are thinking you don't want blue smoke coming out of this, you want to have red. Okay so let's just have a quick look at this. Um, if you click on the, sorry, if you click on this little patch here, then you, the swatch, then you can change that colour. So you can change that to red and then I can click on this bit here the ball at the top and I can change that to great in fact that's the wrong way around so I'm just gonna swap those over and pick that up with the left click pick that one up drag it over there pick that one up drag it over there that's the left click um, if I want to get rid of a color just click here if I want to get rid of a color I can click on the cross I want to add another color in let's add some yellow in here make it a nice bright yellow and click OK so I've got this nice bright yellow happening should we see what that renders like now Okay, not too bad. Uh, what I want to have is a bit more red in there. Let's see if we can get some red happening. Cool. And let's just move this over so we get some grey happening as well. Boom. In fact, I want the whole thing the other way around. So I'm going to pop that one over there, pop that one over there. Move that up. And hopefully that's going to look like a little bit smoky. There we go, lovely. Um, let's scrunch that red up. Okay, so it takes a little bit of tweaking, but you can have fun with this uh, and play around with it. You can have a rough view of what's happening in the scene. Um, we can randomize that a little bit. Uh, incandescence, now this is quite fun. Incandescence is kind of like uh, how much it's kind of uh, producing light or glowing. Um, so what, what I can do in the same way as I did before, I can just add, this is going to be from white to black basically, so we'll just have that um, being quite a light grey uh, and then fading down uh, as it goes through, it needs to be the other way around I think, um, so I'll have it that way around, um, and we'll do that by age as well. Uh, and with that done, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to let you continue play around. So here's the result that I've got after just uh, five minutes of playing around and tweaking. Um, uh, so quite a nice little effect. That incandescence is not particularly nice, actually. Let's just change that color because that gray is actually coming through. And I want that to be maybe a yellow uh, and a red in there as well. And I'll just change that to red there. And we'll just render that again. No incandescence will work nice enough okay that's better um, so yeah just have a play enjoy yourself and see see what you come up with I suggest using a simple scene like this to play around with before you try it on a big project um, and see what you can do uh, so just play that through once I'm not gonna render it out for you you get the general idea um, so having a look at that lovely what a lovely exploding marble I have um, and I'm going to leave it there hope you've enjoyed the tutorial hope it hasn't been too long for you and this has been Clarity Design I'll produce another tutorial soon all the best